Welcome to I have never seen Business Central integrate with Excel like this. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, for some reason I've been thinking a lot about Excel integration lately. Uh, I think that uh, this is one of the areas where we could actually use a bit of modernization. Uh, I think Microsoft are doing a lot of work right now getting bulk data from Business Central into uh, into Excel with the new uh, report layouts and, and stuff like that. But it's still bulk and it's still mainly, or all the effort right now, I think all the effort for, for a while has been on getting data out of Business Central. And the editing Excel experience is it's not that uh easy to work with not that i'm what i'm gonna show in this video is easy on on any scale but the idea that at some point came to me was that it would be fantastic if you could point a, uh, to a random spot inside business central so oh, that's that's the number i need to drag that number into excel and that becomes a living cell in excel that is actually the data in business central at the same time and you can have Potentially update from from both both sides. Um, uh, not not really possible as a hack here because that 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 would it would probably be easier for Microsoft to do as a hack, but but probably not for me. But the idea kind of was you know kept stirring in the uh, in the back of my head. So um, this. This weekend, I guess, uh, I uh, I decided to try something out. And and okay, so enough talk. Let me actually show you something. So here is Excel, um, and it's a uh, it's a pretty empty uh, Excel sheet. So what if I now type a customer number in in F eight for some reason? A custom, even though it's a customer number, it's a string. So in this case, I will uh, prefix this with the uh, with the single quote. So I do ten thousand. Hit enter. Then stuff happened. Um, I could do twenty thousand, and stuff happened again. Um, so what is this? We can see that, that there's a, let's go actually back to 10,000. Uh, so I, then I can, I can reveal that the, the yellow one is, let me see if we can find it, it's here. Um, that is the credit limit. Uh, so if I now type in the yellow one and I type uh, one, two, three, four, five, I move out of that, I go back into BC, I hit a five, I hit a five this time. And now, see, hang on, Eric, that is totally not the number you type. It is not, because I think I made a stupid uh, update to this just before, um, before I started recording the video, where whatever you type in, this number is actually multiplied by seven. So let's put in a seven and go back to BC and hit a five, and we got 49. Okay, so, and and if we change the name at Datum Corporation, uh, hello YouTube. Um, and then right now, it, to force the update, I actually have to just get, switch back between this one. So this is this is live data. So okay, so how does this actually work? Um, it works with if we if we look at so this is just a, a, a number field. Well, if we look at this, we can see that hang on, there is stuff going on here. There is AL code. There's AL code right now in the cell, which is kind of annoying to edit up here. So if I click, and maybe I already spotted this one, it says AL in Excel. So if I click on this, and now I think I have to move myself just a bit. I didn't realize that. I just put myself here. 
then I can look at the thing. That, that's the thing. Uh, so now it says AL in Excel. And here is, so if I go up on, I select this field, and then I say load, here's the code. So we declare a variable, customer, begin, if customer, I'm sorry, this is, I'm not sure I can actually make this, maybe I can make it bigger. Wow. I may actually be able to do that some way, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, ha ha. How about that? So if we can, if customer, and the, the variable goes to C dot get, and now there's something weird going on here. So it actually takes a cell in this case, ampersand, that is ampersand is Excel formula. So basically, by using a, a double quote here, we exit out of the source code and go into Excel formulas. Uh, so when this is actually executed, I'll, I'll get to how this uh, all plays out. Then the value of F8, which is sitting here, is then what's in the get command. And then right now I just use message. So whatever you message, that is what goes back into the cell. Uh, so in this case, message name, if I go down here and I select this one, and then we need to click load here, then we can see that this does the same with address. So what happens down in the bottom? Well, if I, this field is just a number field, right? But the one that says updated next to it is the interesting one. So if I load that one, we can see that we can still create a customer record. We say, if we can get the customer from Feel late. Then we want to validate the credit limit field. And we want to grab F13, which is now a number, but, but we need to convert it into text because, so again, we exit out of, of the AL source code and go back to a, a uh, Excel formula. So we insert the value of this formatted nicely. And here is the time seven. So we could fix the time seven here by removing that. And then when we're done with that, we modify the, uh, the customer and we say update it. So we can save that back into the cell. There we go. So um, if I go back to Business Central now and hit a five, then it's actually a seven. So we could do the one, two, three, four, five here uh, and go back here. And now it works. So. That is AL code inside of the uh, inside the cell of uh, of Excel, and if I if we look at what's actually in here, so if we go up here, uh, wow, I don't know why that is so slow. We can see that there is an AL dot run. So I could I could go here and then I could say equal AL dot run, and then I'll do begin message. Uh, hello YouTube uh, and there you go so this is this is just an Excel formula I hit enter basically hello YouTube um, so all this over here is is just kind of a helper to actually edit because all it is is a all it is is a um, is a new function inside Excel formula and, and then together with the uh, with the side pane thing. So how did I make this? Let me show you. I'll just put myself back in the corner because that's kind of where I belong. Um, and now you know that there's a load and save. So this thing is an Office add-in. Um, and an Office add-in, um, is actually a couple of things. Um, here is VS Code, you know that. So this is this is the, the source code for the Office add-in. Uh, the one I have open right now is the um, is the HTML for the task pane here. So so the Office add-in consists of um, basically three things. I'm only using two of them right now. We have a task pane. We have custom functions and we have commands. I don't think there are 
uh, there's really there's some demo code. So when 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 you go and create a uh, a project of this, you get a lot of demo code, and then you can spend a lot of time removing the demo code uh, for your words. But let's look at functions. Dot js. Uh, so the function js has one function called run. Um, and uh, we somewhere else we defined, I think there's a field a file called manifest uh, that says function dot namespace equal al. So that's al dot run. So if we wanted to create another al function, uh, I would simply create another function in here. You see there's some, some demo code here, add two numbers and stuff like that. So what's actually happening is that when run is called, it's called with the code that, that was the parameter. Um, and in this case, we call a business central uh, API. Uh, I'm using the uh, the AL cap capability of my, my toolbox, the AL compiler and interpreter. Uh, so there's a, right now in my local version here, a remote AL. Uh, so there's a code unit exposed, so you can send code to it and it will send whatever output comes of the code back to you. Um, so we call that, and, and right now you see everything is hard coded because this kind of just to see if, see if this even had a remotely chance of, of working. Um, so like only, uh, only basic auth and stuff like that. Um, but we, we send that in and we end returning uh, and, and stuff gets base 64 uh, process. This is actually a node.js application running. Um, so if you're looking at why don't you do a, a to B a B to A uh, base 64 conversion, that's because that does not exist in Node, then you can use, instead you can use the, the buffer from function. So this one will take whatever code is there, base 64 uh, encoded, send it into BC, let BC execute the code, send the, the, send the uh, result back, and we simply output the result here. Um, so that is the re the return value of the al.run function. Um, and, and that's kind of it. Well, if you, uh, I can I can show you, hang on, let me show, I got another screen. Here is what's happening in the toolbox. Uh, ah, oh, where did you go? So the, the toolbox, the remote AL, which is, you can see that that's the, so when you call a code, call a code unit exposed on OData, uh, it's still OData then slash the name of uh, how it is exposed, underscore the, the, the name of the function. Um, in this case, remote AL takes AL code as text. Uh, we get the code, we compile, pass the code into a, a syntax tree, uh, we then ask the interpreter to run that syntax tree. And if we have error, we return errors. And if we don't, otherwise we just return right now with its output to the console. So and then the last piece was, you know, the task pane um, where I just added in a, an editor. And what you can do from the task pane is that I created two functions, load and save, um, which will grab the formula from the, the first cell of what you have selected. And if it says AL run, then we'll remove the AL run ar around this and edit that. And uh, when we save the code, we'll add AL run around it. So it's just an easy way of, of editing. And this could be way more sophisticated if because AL1 could actually be part of a larger formula, of course, and that will, this will break that totally right now. Um, but the idea was still my, 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 the thing that kept disturbing me was 
the idea of you know of a of a live cell of a cell in BC that is connected directly to data in in Business Central, uh, and then there's all sort of rules that might need to be built around this to actually make it work in, in real life, but I still get uh, a chuckle out of, of, of this just this this just working. Uh, I, I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, so let me ask you. So right after you have subscribed, because if you haven't subscribed, I will not read your comments, but if you have subscribed, I will totally read your comments. Uh, could you use this for anything? And, 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 and what should Microsoft do? Because I don't think this is actually something that, that I should do this, not necessarily. And, and right now I'm, I'm using AL and, 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 and I don't think necessarily this, that's just because that's what I have in, in my toolbox. Uh, but, but the idea of a, a smarter integration and a more clever, seamless integrated integration, uh, uh, what are you, how, how should that be? Um, with this, the, the, because now you can put this on a handheld and you could update stuff in a, in a, uh, an Excel sheet, you can do all sorts of things with this. Uh, I have not tried it, but supposedly this would work fine in, uh, in, in, in the, in the web version of Excel also. Anyway, uh, that's my uh, my little experiment into uh, integrating Excel with Business Central using using AL code uh, directly in, in Excel uh, cells. I was also thinking about well, you could also start if if we added some extra functionality into into in this case my AL, so we could talk about about list and groups of data and so on. So uh, so you could actually not necessarily from a formula, but then uh, perhaps a formula that would trigger something that sits and then go out uh, and, and update and arrange with stuff like that, uh, an area. But I don't know, let, let me know what you think. I, I, I had a lot of fun creating this. Uh, also a lot of frustration because the, the documentation for doing this is kind of lacking and uh, there's two different ways if, if you want to play with this you can you can select between a shared runtime or a custom JS uh, environment and I thought huh shared runtime that sounds super complicated and then I have to obey by rules with whomever I'm sharing with so I'll, I'll, I'll just do the custom thing uh, and it totally backfired on me because the custom thing could not use web services because there were all sorts of weird rules uh, and, and stuff that simply didn't work. Uh, and and I found the uh, support forum for people with this problem and they were all crying. Um, and then the at the bottom was a solution from Microsoft. Don't use that. You just use the shared runtime instead. So I started over with the shared runtime and then everything worked suddenly. Uh, but let me know what you think. Comments below, and then there's even more epic uh, ale hacking in this video. Go check it out. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.